First of all, thank you everyone for being here today. I did not expect that this nice crowd will be here. And thank you to Mike and the team at the San Angeles House Report and to my dear friend Julie. It's very special for me to have this conversation with her because of that history. Um, uh, in 2003, I moved from Puerto Rico to Chicago to follow this idea of, you know, of what it is about becoming an artist and studying art outside of my, of my comfort zone and where I'm from. And um, I did two years of undergrad over there in Chicago. I met some of my one of the most wonderful people that I still have in my life around me out there in Chicago and in school. Uh, some who are here today, actually. And um, I also continued to grad school. My experience out there as a student is something that I like kind of highlighting because it was it was a very uh, transitional time for me to try to understand who I was as a person uh, in in context with who I wanted to be as an artist, too. I was trying to understand what was my art about, uh, what was it that I wanted to explore as, as materials go, and painting, and being in the school, I got interacted, you know, so much access to other kind of uh, materials like ceramic, the sculpture department, performance, and, um, you know, I really appreciated the, uh, the access that the school provided in that sense because I was able to get on the uncomfortable many times and explore how I felt you know, expressing myself in these other forms. I always have had, obviously, my heart in painting and exploring painting, exploring what I can do and say with painting. But those years for me were very uh, transformative. And at the end of grad school, where things were really happening in my little 10 by 10 foot studio, there was a lot of exploration with materials, which is uh, what took me the process that I'm quite mostly known for today using dry oil paint. Um, and around that time, I met Julie, who I was already a big fan because she had participated uh, curatorially in a lot of amazing shows at the MCA. So having her in my studio with her curiosity of meeting me and my work and a couple other, other fellows, um, really open up this conversation about, about myself, about what was my art about, you know, what was I representing, what I was trying to say and explore. And um, after several conversations, she broke up to me and she's like, hey, I really feel I want to put a painting of yours in this very substantial painting show called Constellation at DMCA. And I was, uh, I was a participant there next to painting by Sigmund Polka. Uh, Tom Wesley, and I was yet no one, you know, in, in the art world. Uh, so I was always curious on how someone, what, what did Julie saw back then that made her take the decision to add me to such a substantial conversation. Um, and it has been taking me years, I'm still trying to understand that. And we have met a few times, but I'm curious, you know, how that came about because it was very, it was very um, important for me at that time. The exhibition you mentioned was mostly an exhibition I curated for the MCA Chicago collection, looking at our painting holdings. Yeah. And I always like to include work by local artists, younger artists, kind of makes it up, not having strictly by the part of the collection that's called Judge Royal License. We can do whatever we want sometimes. And I, you know, having had spoken to you, there was one painting in particular, exquisite. Exquisite, yeah. Of sort of this um, dining table that was with grandmothers and had this white background and kind of almost, almost like this floating table. But you had actual fabric or material? I had I had different materials. I think I had a combination of fabric, regular paint, paint uh, being applied from like different type of tubes. So it was very three-dimensional and then on top of that it had this sort of collage of dry oil paint. And that it was kind of your process of using paint almost as a sculptural material yes. or within a collage process that made it very interesting to me to think about your work in relationship to someone like Sigmar Hula or someone like Wesleyan who also was in collage. And because I was a young curator and I was like, I'm going to do what I want to do, I guess, I thought, why not? Why not put Angel of Tarot next to Sigmar Hula? Because it has been much of my curatorial practice to bring in artists into the conversation who haven't necessarily been part of it and to treat our history with a little less preciousness than perhaps yeah. others may. And 
curators play such an important role in the relationship with art and artists, but she really was able to see some of the things that I wasn't able to yet articulate. And, um, and during those conversations between me and her, I was able to stand from different perspectives on what I was doing and see it differently, see it in context with these other artists, some that I didn't thought had a relationship to what I was doing. So it is a mirror of, of understanding ourselves when we create these relationships. So it was really you belong in the museum. Right, so let a young artist know, you don't have to wait 30, 40 years to be in the museum <laughs> exhibition. You have a rightful place, and the work is interesting, and in dialogue with other artists to be in that yeah. space. Yeah, very special. And it was, I, I want to mention one thing just from the early days when I was visiting you as a student, because I think it sort of relates to your work now, in that you were, he was very um, good at making pretty paintings. A little too good, if you will. And he didn't like that, right? He sort of resisted making paintings that just looked good, and they were colorful, and just, you know, kind of silly with yeah. it. But I also remember at that time asking you, uh, why do you paint? Because you were pretty obsessed with painting. You know, the more I, I absorb art history, specifically painting history, the more I realize that all these uh, artists that I admired, and even the ones I didn't necessarily admire as much, they had their own language, their own way of uh, interpreting what painting was for them. So I was just kind of in this very deep digging this all about, trying to see what it meant to me personally in, in context with them, but different from them too. Um, and about those pretty paintings, it was, it was, it was challenging because I didn't want the paintings to come across at these sort of decorative, easily accessed, this was my own judgment, was my own painting at the moment, my own critical sense. I didn't want them to have this easy access where people were quickly absorbed because they were, you know, pretty looking for whatever, you know, or not decorative, but just, you know, just easily to access. I wanted to have a bit more of a challenge also because this is a three, three person thing, right? It's me and my art, but then there's, there's a viewer and I wanted to have a conversation, not just something that is kind of a, a free giving, quickly access. But at the same time with, with my conversations with you, I started seeing, you know, what kind of the idea of beauty means in, in painting and in art uh, from also a different perspective in a good way. And so as you can see here, your material explorations are here, they even have been. Um, you work in sculpture, painting, if we can call these paintings anyone you work with paint. Yeah. Um, the work also is collage, somewhat sculptural, somewhat related to printmaking. It has all of these facets within its process, yeah. but also within the lineage and the conversation that we're having too. So there's a lot of references in your work in terms of history of certain processes. Um, where do we even begin? I guess let's start with maybe how you began to move away from painting itself and the world of Yeah, I, I, I think I knew quite a way, quite, quite quickly, when I was able to find the right subject that I felt confident enough and challenging enough to work with, that was me, my personal story, my memories of back home. There was, for some reason, I recognized that there was a lot of constant, constant um, exercise of going to trying to remember what I left back in Puerto Rico and how it reflects on me at that time in Chicago. So I was all right. I wrote a lot of a lot of references about about things in the odd house of my grandmother, mostly objects and the furniture and just kind of a very detailed description of all the things I could remember or vaguely remember. And uh, when I had that content, with that idea of that content, I was like, well, okay, now how am I going to paint it? That was the thing, it was content and form. And I'm like, well, I, if I paint it traditionally, the content is going to be more of a protagonist than the actual material, but I want both to be as protagonists. And I'm like, well, let me explore in my little studio with different materials, just so when people um, um, are in front of the work, they, they are received with a sort of narrative, but at the same time with a, with a composition of materials that have also their own narrative on itself. And that way there can be that kind of dialogue of the two, of the two subjects. Um, 
that's when I started collaging the dry oil paint and I was getting a lot of interesting feedback with this process of composing the paintings out of dry oil paint. So during that time, I came across with the process of drying oil paint quickly, using little sheets of glass, and when I reused those glasses, that they were full of dry stain, and I just scraped the paint off that surface again, I was, I was exposed to this perfection of print of the stains that were in the glass. But it had become my way of almost kind of a filtering a lot of the elements that I think about it, that I want to work with. And I have said in some sort of times, they almost work like a shield too. Because if I were to paint tra traditionally into the canvas, the subjects that I want to work with and just expose it like that, the directness to the subject from the viewer, I can get a little, um, just a little intimidated by it. And I think the process helps me stop a little bit that directness and think about the work as a narrative, uh, but at the same time as a, as a, you know, materialistically, that's what it works. So all of these still use that process, where you paint All of the paintings that we have here in the show still do that In process. reverse, on the In process. reverse, yes. So very, it's tricky to explain the process here, it will be all day, but, but yeah, an uh, easy way to explain it is that I have to paint on re in reverse, mm -hmm. and then scrape it out and reveal all these layers. That's what we have. You know, I take these these objects and I start kind of checking around where they they should fit, where they seem more curious, uh, uh, and and where they have more more narrative. And there are some motifs in this painting that we're sort of seeing throughout these paper boats. Yeah. Um, the paper airplanes, the water, a kind of central object. Within yeah. space, you were talking earlier about sort of theatricality yeah. of the composition. Maybe say a little bit. Yeah, I think it connects to that painting that you put in that show, mm -hmm. exquisite, where it was like you said, it's this table in this blank space, because it was about the object. It wasn't about you know the surrounding. It was the object as a protagonist. Um, the same way you, know, you make a portrait. It was that kind of essence. So. I really like that the work can have these very centered compositions of these objects with, with different type of objects creating that ambiguous, maybe ambiguous narrative in a very theatrical sense. So you see that a lot of them have that dark background. It's kind of a strong spotlight because I feel like, you know, it's, 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 to me, it's very theatrical and it's almost kind of staging a composition of this memory that is is at the same time very present in my mind, but when I try to physically compose, it becomes something a little more extensive. There was definitely a journey of that time, always, I'm not sure. So some of those, yes, elements like the slide inside the, the, the children's pool, or the sofa with the sway, of course those are things that I kind of build up today, right? Uh, very imaginative, like me trying to create something that not necessarily it's purely about surrealism. Um, it's more about something like a natural realism where you, in the tone they write, you are in this fantastical world where it almost feel very between reality and fantastical. And that kind of balance really, uh, I think it, it really uh, expresses what I'm interested in.